I often recommend Galaxy watches to Android users, but Samsung doesn't make it easy to do this. You see, there are four different models they sell on their website, and each of them has unique strengths and weaknesses that the others don't share. So it gets a little bit tricky, and I wanted to make this video as an ultimate Galaxy Watch buyer's guide, all the differences, all the similarities, and anything else you need to know to buy the right Galaxy Watch for you. So whether you're buying this as a gift for somebody, or buying it for yourself, or trying to lose weight in the new year, this is going to be what I think you need to know when buying a Samsung Galaxy Watch. Starting off with the four watches I have in front of me, of course the first one is the Samsung Galaxy Watch 6 Classic. This one is pretty iconic with a really nice screen to body ratio, a physical rotating bezel that I'll talk a lot more about in a minute, and a lot more that they're, you're really gonna like about this. And then we have the Samsung Galaxy Watch 6 with a drastically different design, but otherwise a lot of similarities shared with the Galaxy Watch 6 Classic. Then we have last year's Galaxy Watch 5 Pro, and I'll explain exactly why this is in the lineup. It definitely deserves its spot here. And then lastly, we have the Galaxy Watch 4. Now the Watch 4, I'm putting in here as the budget model. You might wonder why not the 5? Well, the 4 and 5 were so similar, you might as well recommend the 4, and that's a lot cheaper. But getting back to that rotating bezel, I think that's one of the biggest differences that you'll need to think about when deciding among these watches. So the Watch 6 Classic, as I said, has a physical rotating bezel, while the others have a digital rotating bezel, or a touch bezel essentially, and there are two main things that really matter about this. The first one is going to be the overall appearance and aesthetic and, and the coolness of it. A physical rotating bezel is very unique. Like I wish other watches would copy this. I'm sure Samsung has some fantastic patents on this, but it allows you to navigate the watch interface in a very easy way. So watches generally have small screens, so swiping around is not great. Sometimes you have a rotating crown on like the Apple Watch and, and many other watches out there, but on the outside, it's just such a, such a satisfying way to navigate your watch. Now, the second benefit is the way in which you rotate the bezel. So if you look at how you would naturally rotate a physical bezel, it's probably with two fingers on the outside, maybe one finger on the outside, but, but no matter what, your finger is not going to be covering your display. The touch bezels, on the other hand, that we see on the other three watches, you swirl your finger around and it does cover the display for a good portion of that swirl. So, but with that advantage, you are getting a chunkier watch, a heavier watch, which has its drawbacks with running. For example, running with like a heavy watch is it's not gonna be ideal. And with sleeping, rolling around and having a, like a, a larger watch on your wrist might be uncomfortable for some, but that kind of ties me into the general sizes. We'll talk about the materials in a second, but the sizes with these watches, you're looking at 40 or 44 millimeters, on the six and on the four, just the regular versions of them, then three millimeters larger is going to be the classic versions. We have 43 millimeters is the smaller one here, which is still pretty big. And then we have 47 millimeters. Personally, 47 is a little bit large on my wrist. I wish there was 45, but fortunately, there is a 45 with the Galaxy Watch 5 Pro. All right, so the next category to compare are the prices of these watches. And because they change so much, I wanna show you in real time what I'm seeing at least right now from the sponsor of today's video, which is Best Buy. Uh, so if we just look up the Galaxy Watch 6, you can see at Best Buy, originally it's $299, so about $300 is the MSRP. But as I said, like the, pr the prices change on these so much, there's always sales. So $269 right now for the regular Galaxy Watch 6, but there are two different sizes. We'll talk about that in just a second. Then the Galaxy Watch 6 Classic is $100 more expensive at $399, but again, we have that sale bringing it down $30. And again, that is for the smaller version. The more expensive version right here, or the larger version, uh, looks about $30 more expensive there. Then the Galaxy Watch 5 is actually the most expensive of the bunch, listed originally at $449. So 450 bucks there, but we are getting a sale bringing it down to $400. And then the, mo the most affordable out of all of these is that Galaxy Watch 4, which originally they're listing at 199, but with that discount, we're getting 169 right now. So that's actually like half the price, less than half the price of some of the other watches on here. But regardless, going back to the first two, the Watch 6 and the Watch 6 Classic, I mentioned there were different colors and different sizes. Uh, we can also check those out on Best Buy site as well. So it doesn't really matter which one you click on. There's, there's a permutation in a second. So if I just click on the larger one right here, uh, you'll see the settings all over on the right side. So we can choose if we want a GPS only version or if we want GPS and cellular connectivity. 
we can choose the smaller or the larger version. And there are two different colors for this version, uh, as well as for the 43 millimeter, and the colors are the same there. The regular Watch 6 has three different colors, but only two per size, so you can see uh, the cream version right there is actually not available in the larger version, that's only 40 millimeters. Then going over to the Watch 4, you can see we have three colors down here, including black, gold, and of course silver. And then the Galaxy Watch 5 Pro is available in just those two colors, the gray color and the black color. In addition, they have some specs down here. If you want to read more about uh, the different sizes or some in-depth features over on the right side, you can check out all of that. I'll have links to all these in the description below. Uh, so thanks to Best Buy for sponsoring this video. If you want to buy a Watch 6 or a Watch 6 Classic, head on down and check out those links. The materials with these watches, that, that's really a significant thing that you'll want to consider. So the Galaxy Watch 6 Classic has stainless steel, which is a very hard metal, but also relatively heavy metal compared to the other ones on here. And so, one, we are getting great durability on this. We have a sapphire crystal display. The display is recessed and it's stainless steel around there. So I'm not worried at all about this getting damaged, no matter what I end up doing. Now, on the contrary, the Galaxy Watch 4 and the Galaxy Watch 6 are lighter because they're made of aluminum. But aluminum is more prone to scratches. It's a softer metal. And without a raised edge on here, you are more likely to damage your display. Now, we have a sapphire crystal display on the Galaxy Watch 6, so it is a little bit more durable than the 4. But regardless, having that exposed flat display can lead to damage as I had with my Galaxy Watch 5 and my Galaxy Watch Active 2. I damaged both of those, both when I was rock climbing. I don't know why I didn't learn from my mistake, but you wanna be careful. Maybe you get a case if you end up with a, like a Watch 4 or a Watch 6. But then the most durable of these is the Galaxy Watch 5 Pro, which has a titanium case, which gives you a nice lightweight watch, uh, much lighter than the 6 Classic but also a very strong watch that's also ha it has that recessed display. So again, you're not gonna be worried about damaging that. That's really the best one I would say for like rock climbing. Now, rather than just like a hand wavy, oh, this is heavier than that watch, like here's the numbers. Like you can see that it's actually basically double the weight for the larger Watch 6 Classic compared to the Galaxy Watch 4. So those are some of the differences with the physical designs of these watches, but it doesn't end there. We have some pretty significant differences with the accuracy, the tracking, the battery, and the software that is available on these. So while they do all have sleep coaching and GPS and heart rate tracking and a lot of the main stuff you'd expect, including uh, body composition, for example, there are some certain differences you'll see with the Watch 5 Pro, the Watch 6 and the Watch 6 Classic. All three of those have a temperature sensor on them, which allows you to track sleep a little bit more accurately and it allows for female cycle tracking. Something that's unique to the Galaxy Watch 5 Pro is the uh, GPS route tracking. Now, even, even though all of these watches have GPS, the route tracking feature is really meant for hiking or backpacking and kind of navigating around, although you could probably get a third-party app on the other watches to really basically do that same thing. The three newer watches here do have faster charging, although the smaller battery on the Watch 4 means that you're pretty much charging up just as fast anyway, or it's really not a significant difference, but that kind of leads me into the battery sizes there. The Galaxy Watch 5 Pro like you might wonder why it's actually on this list since I said the Watch 6 Classic was so durable. And the reason is that battery life. The battery life on here is substantially better than anything else in this lineup. All the other three are basically getting one and a half-ish days, maybe two days if you're really uh, conservative on your battery, maybe one day if you're aggressive on your battery. But the Watch 5 Pro, you can pretty comfortably get like three-ish days. So it's about double the battery life. So as far as the accuracy goes, let's start off with the GPS. They all actually had almost exactly the same distance on my three mile run. It was 3.05 versus 3.04 versus 3.05. So that's very impressive. Looking at the map, you can see very subtle deviations from where the trail actually was. So GPS on all of them, pretty solid. Now the heart rate on the other hand had a lot of variation. You could see that the Watch 5 Pro was generally running a lot lower until the very end it spiked up. The Watch 6 was the most accurate out of all of these and I did compare this to a Polar H10, a known accurate heart rate strap. So if you're worried more about the heart rate accuracy, obviously the fit has a lot to do with this. Where you're wearing it on your wrist matters a lot, but even with all things considered, I think the Watch 6 is going to be more accurate in this department. Now the Galaxy Watch 6 and 6 Classic also 
have a newer processor on board, a newer chip in there that should be a little bit faster. So as you can see in this quick little like app open test, uh, they're all reasonably quick. They're definitely doing a good enough job for these watches, um, but you might see a slight c speed improvement if you buy a newer one. But other than that, they're basically all running a lot of the same software. Some differences maybe being like the watch faces, for example, but between these watches, when it really comes down to it, which one's actually the best one to buy? I, I love giving a cut and dried answer saying, just buy this one unless you can't afford it and then get this one. But the truth is it's a lot trickier with these watches. Like I said, Samsung doesn't make it easy to make this video here. So I think I would say this, if battery is super important to you, and this is really common, a lot of people really want their battery to last more than two days, they don't wanna charge it every day, then the Watch 5 Pro is really your only option. I wish the Watch 6 Classic had a bigger battery, but as it is, that's just what we're getting right now. But if you don't really care about charging your watch every single day, or maybe every day and a half, then the Watch 6 Classic is personally my choice. The rotating bezel is so unique, you're getting a nice screen to body ratio, and because it has the same sensors as the Watch 6, this is just as capable for running or for tracking any other workouts or tracking your sleep, and although it's a little bit heavier, it just takes some getting used to, and once you're used to it, it definitely gets the job done. Now that's not to say the Watch 6 is not a good buy, because it is $100 cheaper, and it is a slimmer design, so if you really care about having a smaller watch that has literally all the exact same capabilities as the Watch 6 Classic, then sure, get the Watch 6. But I probably wouldn't recommend buying the Watch 4. It's just, it's a little bit older now, about two and a half years old, and by the time you actually get this watch, you might only have it for another two years before it kind of is out of date and you have to buy a newer watch anyway. So if you're on a budget, that's totally fine. There are other great watches to buy, but let me know out of these watches, which one you actually like the best. And if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. Thanks for watching. I'm Mike O'Brien and I'll see you in the next video.